So in the second part of the uh, 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 of this unit, uh, we're going to introduce the CSV module. So the job of the CSV module basically is to take a file that you've already opened and try and interpret what's in that file as a tabulated data where they, the data is separated by some uh, delimiter that marks the, the difference between different values on each row. Um, so CSV stands for comma separated values and kind of as its name suggests, it's particularly suited for when that delimiter is a comma. So in other words, your data file looks like value, comma, value, comma, value. But actually it will work equally well with other delimiters such as tabs or spaces to separate out the values. So uh, as we'll see in the next part of the video, that if your data is all numerical, so every value in your, your table of data is a number, then uh, there are other libraries that are going to do a better job for you, or do more of the work for you. Um, and in particular, in the next part of the video, I'll introduce the gen from txt function from numpy that is a uh, uh, good at dealing for, for data that's all numerical. But um, the advantage that the CSV module has um, is that it's part of the standard Python library, meaning it comes with Python. So if you have Python, you have the CSV module, so it's always available to you. Um, and, and that's a particular advantage it, it has for, for dealing uh, when you're dealing with different data files. So we're going to start off by uh, showing you how to uh, simply go and read the similar, uh, the same data files we, we showed at the start of uh, part one of this unit to, to read that file in. Um, and so we're going to use the um, csv.reader function in order to go and do that. So the code we need looks a bit like this. It's very simple. We start off by importing the CSV uh, module. And then uh, we're going to open the file using the same open that we've been using all the way through. And then the difference is now that when we have that for loop, we're not just um, doing for line in um, my data. We're instead looking for um, what's going through uh, csv.reader my data. So in other words, we've introduced the CSV data, so CSV, CSV reader in order to go and uh, interpret uh, what's coming in from the file that we're reading. And you can see what it's done here is it's simply, we're printing out each line, but each line is now a list. And it's a list where each element in that list is a value that was separated out by a comma. Um, now, of course, you could do something very similar to this um, simply by reading in, in the line, uh, file in line by line by line. Um, and uh, it, code to do that would look a bit like this. So it would be an open and then for line in, in, in my file. And then we just simply strip off the end of line markers and then split by the commas. So what is the improvement of doing it with the CSV reader? Well, if you look carefully at what's going on with the second line in that data file, where the column headers, the second column of that data was uh, not y hyphen data, it was y comma data. But it was in quotes, so that, that comma there shouldn't have been a problem. And the CSV module is intelligent enough to spot the value you've got is quoted, and therefore doesn't try splitting on the comma that's inside the, the y column header. Um, and, and therefore only gives you a, a list of three elements um, on that, that particular line. Whereas the strip dot split is not that clever and simply goes and splits it up. And so you end up with four elements, four column headers um, and doesn't handle the quotes at all. So the CSV module is being more intelligent and is taking some of the work away from you and is dealing with a, an annoying, what could otherwise be an annoying corner case. But it's maybe not so useful if everything you've got as now is numbers. But the real advantage is comes instead when instead of thinking about a data file where you're mainly interested in thinking of it as, as columns of data, so a column of X data, a column of Y data, a column of Z data, where instead it's more orientated towards thinking about it in terms of rows of data. So where you have each row represents a record of information about one object or one thing or one person, whatever it is. So the example we've got here is um, would be some test results. So we have a name, we have an email, um, and we have uh, a mark, and we have one of those for each of the uh, students in this in this table. Um, and so a more convenient way of thinking about this data, rather than thinking about it as a, a column of names, a column of email addresses, a column of marks, 
you might want to think of it as being um, a row. And the easiest way and nicest way to represent this would be as a dictionary. So we could have a different key to our dictionary for each of the, the bits of information that we have about this, this student. So we would have a, 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 for the first row, we would have a dictionary, which had a key name, which would be Ali SM. And it would have a key email, which would be py33sma.atleads.ac.uk. And it would have a key mark, which would be 45. And then we'd have another um, dictionary for the next row, another dictionary for the next row, and, and so on. Um, and so you think of this as being a list of dictionaries where each dictionary has the same set of keys, which are the, the different bits of information we have. So in this sort of picture, we would refer to each row as being um, a record. And each of the columns of data is a field um, in the data or a field of the record. Um, and so this would be what we'd like to go do is going to um, read this data in. And so the CSV module lets us go and do this, and it does it with a thing called a dict reader. Um, and the code to go and do it looks like this. OK, so again, we're importing the CSV module. Um, we are um, opening the file in the standard way, and then we're reading in um, each record, passing it through csv.dict reader. And again, we're giving it the name of the file. And then we also have to give it the, the field names because it has to know what each key in the dictionary should come up with. And then you see it produces a whole bunch of dictionaries. Um, it's, um, so the, the key differences are we just replace CSV reader with CSV dict reader. Um, and then we're telling dict reader what the keys are. But it, it's all very well, but it's not really kind of quite what we want to go and do because you see that very first dictionary it's produced was in fact the, um, the, the header row that told us which, um, uh, uh, told us the name of the keys that we're going to have in the dictionary. We could have just skipped over that. Um, so we could have just started off by doing uh, next my data to make it jump over before we went into the for loop. But it would be even nicer if we could go and have it read out the column headers to work out what the columns actually were. So we could then produce dictionaries which were appropriate. And again, it's actually really straightforward and easy to do this if we're using a combination of CSV reader and CSV dict reader. And the code looks like this. So um, again, we're importing CSV. We're going to create a, 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 an empty list of records, which we're going to append each record to. And then we're going to open the data file. And then we know that the, in this data file, the first row of that data file is the um, the, the column headers, and that they're separated by commas. So we can use CSV reader to go and read that first row and return it as a list of, um, of, of the, the names of each column or the names of each field. Um, now, uh, CSV reader and CSV dict reader are both uh, what's in Python is called, um, uh, sorry, that should be CSV, not CVS reader, are both what's called a um, iterator, meaning that they will uh, be something you can put into a for loop. And they're also something you can go and use next with. So uh, what we're doing um, on the uh, um, fourth line there is we are just saying, um, take the next line, which in this case is the first line, because we haven't done anything else with any of the other lines yet, um, out of the... Um, my data, reading it through CSV reader. And that gives us our list of field names. And then we can start our for loop and we can pass into the dict reader that list of fields we've just read. And so what you see it does is, is it, so it's not producing the spurious dictionary of headers, but it's also automatically worked out what the column headers are and made a suitable dictionary for us. And so we just have those rows of uh, data that we've produced. Of course, having been able to read files, you probably want to be able to write them as well, because you might want to save out some temporary data or pass it to a different program or um, send it to somewhere else for um, analysis or plotting or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, and so the module also uh, has um, routines that are um, going to write data that complement the reader and the dict reader. So we have a csv.writer and a csv.dictwriter. Um, and these will either write, uh, in the case of CSV writer, 
uh, a list or some other sequence of uh, strings and numbers. Um, or in the case of the dict writer, it will take in a dictionary and it will write out uh, a dictionary um, as, a, 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 as, a, as a record. Um, if you tell it which the keys the dictionary it should be writing. Uh, and so the code to go and do that, again, is, is very straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to write out that data I just read in the, the previous example. So we open the, the file for output. So it's got a, a mode of W on it. And then I create a, um, a writing a writer. So I do a call to CSV dict writer, passing it the name of the file I'm going to be writing to and telling it what the names of my fields are. Um, and then I simply, um, first of all, I tell it to go and write the header row. So it produces that first line with the column headers. And then after that, I simply go through uh, all the records and write each row out in turn. Uh, and actually in this particular example, I didn't even need to have that for loop. I could have just done a call to write a dot write rows and passed it all the records in one go and it would have just output them all um, one after the other, doing exactly that little for loop that I've coded manually. Uh, and then the second part of that example, I'm just reading the file back in just to show what it actually wrote out to the desk. Um, and so it's an easy way of producing, of producing the output uh, back out from the, the desk. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, the, the problem with um, the CSV um, formats is there isn't one well-defined format. There's a whole bunch of different dialects. And so it understands this um, and it comes built in with uh, three dialects. So you have Excel, Excel tab and Unix. Now Excel and Excel tab are what Microsoft Excel produces for .csv and .txt files. And obviously that's um, almost a de facto standard for uh, many situations in, in certainly dealing with Windows and PCs and, and often Macs as well. The um, special Unix dialogue, dialect is uh, what's produced by a lot of um, programs that run on Linux or other Unix systems. Um, the main difference is just that the end of line marker is a new line rather than a carriage return new line. Um, but that's what's built in. But of course, if you don't know exactly what um, your dialect should be or how to set it up, then you can get CSV to try and work it out for you. Um, and so that's a really kind of powerful and useful function. And so the code to go and do that looks a bit like this. So what you have to do is you have to obviously import CSV. You want to open the file you're interested in trying to work out what its format is. And then you create, you do a call to csv.sniffer and then use that thing. So it's, a, um, it's created a, a sniffer for you, um, which I've assigned to dialect sniffer. Uh, variable and I'm going to call the dot sniff uh, with the dialect sniffer um, and uh, I'm going to pass it into the sniff um, uh, the contents of the file that I'm interested in trying to work out what it is uh, and then it will analyze that, that, inf that, that data from inside the file and try and work out what it might be in terms of what the delimiters are um, and what the end of line markers are and so on. So in this case, it's worked out that for this particular file, the delimiter was a space character um, and that the line terminator is the standard carriage return new line. So then I can use that um, to go and read my file, even without knowing off, the top, off beforehand exactly what format it is. Uh, and the code to do that um, ends up looking like this. So what we do is we do we do two reads on the file. So the first read, that first with open, is just the code we had immediately beforehand that we use to work out what the dialect is. And then we uh, close the file, so we come out of that with block, and then we reopen it again. Um, now that's again is maybe not quite the most intelligent way of doing this, but the main thing you have to know is that you is once you've read past the file, uh, you if you want to then go and read all the file again, you'd have to go back to the start. Um, so closing the file and reopening it is kind of the uh, quick and easy way of making sure that you're going to restart reading the file from, from the start. Um, in uh, the next unit, we'll uh, talk a bit about other ways in which you can go and do that. But then that second width starting on line six is now just doing that same process of reading the file. You see in line seven, we're doing a call to csv.reader. But this time we are passing it the dialect that it should work with. 
and now I just ask it to print out what it's getting. And you see what it's doing is it's just printing a list of words because in fact this text file is the one that we saved in unit one of this uh, topic, uh, which was just two lines of text. And you can see here it's just managed to go and read in uh, those lines of text and separate out each word for us and present it as a nice list. Um, and so um, with the dialect uh, options and with the sniffing options, you, you don't even have to be able to work out in advance um, what separating the, col the comma, what separating the columns and what's separating the rows. You still have to look at the file enough to make sure that it actually is something that's going to be uh, understandable as being um, a series of entries which are separated by some delimiter and to make sure that you don't have um, lines you need to skip over at the start and so on. Um, but aside from that, um, uh, it, it's quite a, a powerful way of dealing with, with your file.